Hello. Today I'd like to show you how to do a little technique that gives you some, I guess you call them three-dimensional little flying geese. This is the flying geese shape, that triangle with the light or with the background corners on it. But in this case I'm making it so that that's flappy, although it won't entirely flap when it's sewn in along the bottom edge, but there will be these kind of little, I guess they're pockets, little um, areas there. So it was just a fun little technique and I've started out with some two and a half inch strips of fabric. And so my background, I'm using this um, really nice little dot with uh, white fabric with a little tiny coloured dot on it. And I've got some different colours um, for my little geese here. So for the background fabric, we need to cut two and a half inch squares. So you need two two and a half inch squares per flying goose unit. I guess they're a goose. Um, so I just cut some. So I've got my fabric doubled here. So I'm cutting for each little unit at a time. So if I'm making a few units, I just go along and cut up into two and a half inch squares. And I'm using my board to help me line up for everything here. And you can cut all the way along. And so now I've got a little pile of two and a half inch squares for my blocks. And then for my, my um, shape in here, which is we start with the strip, they need to be two and a half inches wide because we're using two and a half inch squares and they need to be cut four and a half inches long for each unit. So I'm just going to trim off my ends here so that everything's lined up. Again, I've got this lined up along my board and I can come along um, four and a half inches and I can see where I'm at again because I'm using the markings on my board for my cutting. So if I'm going to do several, I can come along and just slice that up into four and a half inch units but I don't need to do all of that just at the moment. I just thought I'd quickly show you how you can make these. These are a fun little thing, add a little bit of texture to your work. And while I'm here, I've got a couple of other little bits of fabric here that are, are quite fun, which I thought would be quite nice if we do what we call fussy cutting so that we cut them so that they fit. So I thought the little sailboat, we might just lose the bottom of the boat but I didn't think that was too much of a problem. And this little crab was quite cute, the little brighter one. So it is a little bit more wasteful on fabric to fussy cut because we're trying to make sure the right bit of fabric is exactly where we want it. So what I'm going to do, we need to cut these strips. They're already two and a half inches wide. So I've, I've cut them so that I think that that's going to work for my two and a half inches. And I want them to be four and a half inches wide. So if I line it up again, using the markings on the board, so that the center goes through a line on the board, I just need to cut it two and a quarter inches either side of that center line. So on my ruler here, I'm going to turn it over here and I'm going to cut it two and a quarter inches. So this is my center line here, which is now at the two and a quarter marking on my ruler, on, uh, following that line that goes right up the middle. So I can cut them both at the same time because I've got them both lined up. So it is a little bit wasteful because you end up not using all of the fabric when you do this sort of thing, but it's kind of fun to just put the odd little bit in. And now I need to come two and a quarter in inches away from that center line over this side so that my strip will end up being four and a half inches wide, long, something. So, and I can take that away. And so now I've got, and I can just double check that that's four and a half inches. And yes, it sits at four and a half inches and I should be able to now position it so that I pretty much get the boat and the crab in my little um, triangle that I was after, something like what I've done here. So now that we've cut all those little bits, we've got everything ready to go. Um, so you need to have two of your background squares for each uh, little uh, geese unit. And you're going to fold this in half, your strip, and that, so along what is now the shorter edge, so you've got the fold at the top. You're going to lay that on top of your square. The fold should sit quarter of an inch down from the top of your square. And we're going to lay this one over so it's all right sides together. So basically you're sewing your two background squares right sides together, but with this folded fabric with the fold at the top in between. And I can just stitch that now with my quarter inch seam on the sewing machine and come down there and I might do a few while I'm here so that we can see what they all look like so again I've got my 
two background squares. I'm going to fold that in half, put the fold to the top, line up the bottom edges with the raw edges and put that right side down. And feed these through. It's This is just a fun little technique. As I said, you could just add in as a little bit of dimension or interest on a quilt. So two backgrounds, fold that in half, put the fold to the top and the raw edges to the bottom, fold that one over and stitch it through. I think I'll, I might as well stitch all six of these so that we can see the little group of them afterwards. So fold it in half and it's great that you can use stripes for this. I quite like the stripes. Okay, fold to the top, raw edges to the bottom. And then we'll do the two that we've fussy cut as well. Okay. So I'm wanting my crab to be, as I look at it, um, with his, the, the claws up in the air. So I'm going to fold that over. And so the edge that I'm wanting to sew is the is when you look at it, the top edge. So you fold that over and make sure that that edge is the one that you're sewing into your seam there. It kind of happens automatically when you're looking at it. Raw edges level, fold along the top. And then last one we'll do with this little sailboat. Same thing, we fold it over with the top of the boat going towards the seam that we're sewing. And stitch that in. And there we have already got some little geese. I'll just bring the iron over and we'll just snip them apart. So it doesn't take too long to make these. In fact, I think these are quicker to make than other sorts of flying geese. You wouldn't necessarily want these for everything. So what I'm going to do now to press them because that seam is actually quite bulky it's going to need to go one way or the other because at the top we've got a little fold it kind of you can't open it flat out uh, well you could I suppose and, and flatten that top but I tend to want to go to one side or the other and I'm just going to press that seam now I'm not trying to press the fold in the um, the colored bit and I'm just going to do the same thing so the seam is now going over that way but I'm just still going to press that little bit there but not along that fold and then I'm going to open that out so that that center bit comes down and just keep an eye on your corners they should line up with the bottom edge if you go right through your corner they should line up with the bottom edge of your squares there and then you can just press all of that and there's your little goose so I'll just quickly do these other ones. Now, if you were going to be joining them in a little row, you may want to think about whether you make your seams go in opposite directions so that they'll nestle in together. So I just like to press that little seam. It just seems to help it sit open better if you do it that way. Open that out. And line up your bottom edges and your points. Just mind you don't burn your fingers with the iron dangerous little geese really. So here I've got this little one with a little crab in it. So again I'm just going to press that seam one way and just quickly press that seam there. I'm going to open it out and we hope that crab is going to be just where we want him and yes he is. Line up your edges and you fold through your point. And there it is. And we'll see if the sailboat's worked. Press the seam. Oops. And, oh, he's a little bit high, but I think it nonetheless would still have the right effect if you were using it. The boat picture is probably a touch big for this idea, but I just thought it was quite cute to see the little boats in there. So I might as well press these other couple while I'm here, and then we'll be all done. So 
I haven't um, got a project to show you with these in. I thought I'd just show you the technique and let you think up a little project for yourselves. I'm sure you're very capable of doing that. Okay, I love that these stripes work so nicely. And there I've got some little geese. Let's get that out of the way. So I don't know what you're going to do with your geese, but I just think that they're quite fun. Have a little sailboat. Got a couple more that I'd already done here. Um, don't know. As I said, I don't know what you're going to do with them, but they could be very fun, just scattered throughout a quilt. Or if you're doing things with geese in them, you can go in different directions. You could um, top and tail them. You can op offset them. There's there's kind of a lot of things um, that you can do. With flying geese so i just thought i'd show you though how to achieve that little technique with a little bit of texture in it for when you want to make something with a little bit of texture in it thank you